Hello, thank you for joining me today again on the Church History Trail and we're continuing here in Gal Galgorm and uh, we couldn't come to Galgorm without showing you the golf club and as you can see there it's a uh, Galgorm golf club and you can see the golfers there practising and you can also uh, there's a there's a kitchen up there as well where you can get food. But uh, what we're here today to do is we're going back to the castle. And so this wee path here will take us up towards the castle. Now, I've come across a, another piece of history um, concerning this castle and also the old church because I think I have actually found uh, those, some of those at least who are buried in the old church ruins beside the castle in Galgorm which I, I didn't know who actually was buried there because you can't get in and it's hard to, to read but uh, I've done a wee bit of research and I think I've found uh, who is actually buried there which I will share with you later when we get up there but in the uh, early 20th century Ballymena was actually the heartland of Ulster Unionism and it was also a thriving agricultural district and also industrial centre. And there was a busy railroad that connected the town to uh, Belfast. Now, Ballymena was also one of the major unionist centres against Home Rule for Ireland in 1912. And there had been previous Home Rule crises in 1886 and in the period of 1892 to 1893 both of which were, act were actually rejected, eventually rejected, in the House of Lords. Now, one such family who were against Home Rule for Ireland in 1912 was the Young family of Galgorm Castle. And the Youngs had experienced, had, sorry, the Youngs had expended their wealth on equipping uh, Edward Carson's newly formed Ulster Volunteer Force, who was formed to uh, fight against Home Rule and it was formed in 1912. Now, the Youngs had in fact been uh, prosperous merchants in Ballymena in the early uh, 19th century and had bought Galgorm Castle and its estates from the Earl of Mount Cashel who uh, had gambled it away. Now, the Youngs then lost all their money when the linen industry crashed. And we're just walking through a wee bit of wood here, which is from the golf course to the uh, the car park here near the castle. So it's absolutely lovely. And you can see the mushrooms there. I wouldn't advise you to eat them mushrooms, but you might get a wee bit of indigestion afterwards. And so this is lovely. Now, John Young of Galgorn Castle John was born in 1826, he died in 1915. And he was one of the actual six signatories of the Ulster Provisional Government Proclamation on the 24th of September, 1913. And believe it or believe it or not, but he was actually a believer in tenant rights, amazingly. Now, Edward Carson had inspected the newly formed uh, troops, the newly formed force at uh, Galgorm in July of uh, that same year in 1913. Now, John's son, George Young, who was also known as Orange George, uh, with his, among his friends, he actually uh, became the local commander of Carson's newly formed force. And you can see a wee bridge here over the wee stream, which is fantastic, absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, isn't it? However, not all the uh, local Protestants feared the uh, Gaelic-Irish culture that existed in close proximity to Ballymena. And Rose Young, who was George's sister, who lived at Galgorm Castle, was actually a fluent Irish speaker. And she was an enthusiastic member of uh, the Gaelic League. She actually taught the Irish language throughout the district in several classes. And of course, Edward uh, Carson himself, while he was studying at uh, Trinity College down in Dublin, he actually played hurling with some distinction 
in so much that actually a GAA trophy uh, has actually been named after him in his honour. And you can see some of the, uh, the businesses here. So this isn't somewhere where it's not used. This is a complex here and they have different stuff here, different businesses here. And just in front of us there is actually the big garden centre. That's a massive garden centre in behind that wall. And uh, there's a coffee shop and all in there and a, a shop as well. And so a GAA trophy was uh, was actually named after Sir Edward Carson and the Irish Sportsman, which is the was the journal of the day, it actually said concerning uh, Carson and his hurling that he had distinguished himself on the field. Now the Home Rule crisis was interrupted with the outbreak of the First World War, and much of Carson's force actually enlisted with the British Army as the 36th Ulster Division and uh, went to fight on the Western Front. And the wee photo that I will use for this video actually shows Sir Edward Carson and Sir James Craig in July 1913 at the castle here in Galgorn, along with uh, John Young, the owner of the castle, and also the father of George Young, or Orange George as he was known, and also uh, Rose Young, who done much to, uh, she done much to defend and to propagate the uh, Irish language. And if you look at the wee photo there, you'll see Carson in the middle of the door there, the front of the door, and uh, you'll see uh, Craig at his right, Carson's right, and then John Young, the father of George and Rose, is actually to Carson's left. And you'll see a wee deer as well, because uh, deers actually ran here over the the domain, the domain, and so they were. There, this at one time there used to be deer here as well, actually, and you can see the castle there in front of us, and just see if I let you see that, and also down the bottom there, you can see the church, the old ruined church, which I will talk about shortly as well. And so this is a fantastic place. And as I said in the other wee video, uh, it's also got a connection with the 1641 rebellion and also the Cromwellian forces. It's also got a connection with the Williamite Wars uh, in 1689 and 1690. And it's also got a connection with the uh, 1798 rebellion. And of course, the church was burnt uh, during the 1798 rebellion. So a big history here. And in the last video, I showed you inside the castle here with these broken windows. So I'll not show you the other one because it's just a boiler house, but I'll show you this one again in case you haven't seen the other video. Um, because this is quite cool. As you can see, it's like a drain house, isn't it? But it's dirty like that, it's not used. But I have been told that there's actually plans to uh, do something uh, with the castle, which would be good. Because it's, if it stays much longer like that, it'll, it'll just go to wreck and ruin. And we certainly don't want that. And so I'm going to take you up here and uh, show you the, uh, the Rose Young inscription. Because as I say, she was, uh, she was a promoter of the Irish language. And this is the castle here, in the front of the castle, as you can see. Pretty amazing. And you can see like a wee dog or something, or a dragon, just over the door. So, I'll show you this wee plaque first, and then I'll explain the photo to you that I'm using for this. or at least the photo that I've planned to use. Hopefully I'll be able to use it. It's a uh, birthplace of Rose Young, 1865 to 1947. And then there's uh, the Gaelic language there in honor of Rose. 
And so that photo of, that, that I use, or that I'm hopefully going to use for this wee video, you can see them standing there at the door. And if you can just imagine Carson there being sort of central, and then Craig to his right. Craig, of course, was the Prime Minister of Northern Ireland. And then John Young, who's the owner of the castle here. So he was um, to Carson's left. And you've got one of the deer then actually standing in front of them. So there you go. That's uh, Galgarm Castle. Absolutely amazing. And I showed you them wee battlements there in the other video, so I'm not going to show you them now um, because it would just take up more time, which I don't want to do. But I am going to talk about the church and the burials. And the young family's uh, private church actually dates from the same time as the castle, 1618. And it was, uh, it was actually uh, used by the family until it was burnt down by the United Irish men in 1798. And so it's pretty great, pretty cool to have these ruins. I think you will agree. And after it was burnt down, then they held the services, including baptisms, uh, in the castle's kitchen. Believe it or believe it not. So they actually held the services in the castle's kitchen after this was burnt down. But I suppose they need somewhere to hold it. So a kitchen was as good as any. You can see the beautiful scenery there. And so we're just going to go down here and have a look at these graves. Now, don't quote me on these, but I think I have uh, discovered who is buried where. But as I say, I can't be 100% sure, so if I'm a wee bit off then, I do apologise for that. But the last video i done of this here, I didn't know uh, who was buried here, because of course you can't get in, there's a lock on. But I have done a wee bit more uh, research. And that first one there, which I will zoom in and like to see, that first one there, as far as I can make out, it's uh, in mem memorial, the Right Honourable John Young, JPDL of Galgorm Castle. He was born in 1826 and he died in 1915. So I think that's the original then, John Young, who was actually the owner of the castle, who is actually buried there which is fantastic because this is the burial ground of the uh, of the Youngs. Now, although the castle was, the, the church was burnt down in 1798, um, so if it's not the burial place, which I assume it is, it certainly must be an, a memorial to the family, but I would assume they're, they're buried here as well. So that was John Young, who uh, of course was the owner of Galgarn Castle. And then the one up above there, it is in Memorum, and it's R.Y. So the R.Y. I think is for Robert Young, uh, D.L. 1856 to 1933. I don't know what the 1894 is. Uh, I don't know. I haven't a clue what that is for. But I would assume that's Robert's grave or else memorial, one of the two. And then... The last one there, the last one there, here, this is what it says, at least what I can make out of it anyway. Here rests in peace, Lieutenant Colonel Arthur Chichester, OBEMC, 1889 to 1972. So I would assume Arthur Chichester was related to the original Arthur Chichester, I would assume, of Carrick Fergus. And then it says, uh, also his wife, Hilda Grace Chichester, nay young, so she, his wife was a young. 1896 to 1980. So that's the best I can do for you. Um, maybe you are from the area and you have more information than I am privy to. So if you are, then why don't you leave a wee comment and it would be great to uh, get that information. And again, I'll show you the wee crypt. I haven't a clue. I'll assume that's a crypt and I haven't a clue who's buried in there. I assume it's the Youngs as well. So I'll show you through the window again and uh, then we'll wrap this wee video up. And remember to tune in for the next video because uh, I'm hopefully recording inside the Moravian Church. I'm only after recording inside the old school house at Grace Hill. So uh, 
don't forget and check those out and so that's inside fantastic So I'll give you another review of the uh, castle and then the church and then that, that'll do it, we'll wrap it up. So that's the castle and then that's the church and of course the church was destroyed in the 1798 rebellion. So thanks for watching and I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. I certainly have enjoyed researching it and also recording it. God bless. <laughs>